Hello Internet, welcome back to our tutorial series. In this episode we're going to be talking about bionics. Mostly we're going to be talking about them as a concept, uh, how to use them, things like that, about the bionics menu, which we can see here, and specifically we are going to talk about the various recharging abilities that are available to you. Um, because I didn't really want to go into a lot of detail about some of the cooler, rarer bionics. I, Frankly, when I play a game, one of the things that makes me the most interested is when I'm trying to find out how much the game has to offer. So recently I picked up uh, Call of Duty, the uh, Warzone, right? Uh, it's a free battle royale on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, whatever. And at first it was very exciting because it's like, oh man, I want to unlock the next gun. I want to see what the next new gun is, all this stuff. And then once you see everything, you're kind of like, eh. I don't know. Okay, I mean, that's neat, but I've seen it all now, so it's not super interesting to me anymore. And I feel that way about Cataclysm as well. If I show you all the Bionics, it kind of takes some of the fun out of the game. So we're not going to go into detail about all the Bionics. We're just going to talk about them conceptually. So we've already talked about Autodocs and why they're important. We've already talked about um, CBMs as uh, for installation and whatnot. Once again, I would refer you to my uh, Autoclave video. Uh, which should pop up in the right hand corner here um, and so we're not going to talk about that what I want to talk about is bionics so first of all you access the bionics menu by pressing the lowercase p key um, by default I believe and it will bring up this menu it will show you any installed bionics they're separated into two categories active and passive um, passive CBMs are always active and will always provide you a benefit this would be things like the uh, internal chronometer which will let you see the time at all times they don't require a battery charge, so they will always function. The uh, alloy plating CBM we saw in the last episode qualifies as passive. You will always gain the benefit of these. You don't need to turn them on or off, and they do not require power. As far as I know, none of them require power. Then we have active. And active is where it will list everything that requires a toggle, so something you actually have to turn on. These are the battery... Uh, the power restoring CBMs, you see they'll co they're color coded in teal. Uh, they may be color coded in dark blue for you. I have my uh, dark blue text set to teal because it's more visible on a black background. Um, but they will be color coded a certain way. And then here we have a cranial flashlight. And I just installed this so we can show you what other CBMs will look like. Um, so the, these uh, rechargers don't have a, a cost associated with them, but the actual active bionics that you get, the flashlight, we saw the night vision CBM in the last episode, really anything that drains power will have a similar layout to this. It will tell you the name of the bionic, how many joules it takes um, to turn this item on. So if I activate this flashlight right now, it will reduce our battery charge, which is currently 287J. Um, it will reduce that by three. And then it shows you how many it consumes per turn. Uh, so three joules per turn. If you're on older versions of the game, um, joules and kilojoules were not added to the game at the time. It used to just be a kind of nebulous unit. There was no uh, actual power associated with it. It wasn't actually com like compared to real world power drain and things like that. So this is a relatively recent thing, and bionic power comes generally in kilojoules. So uh, this three joules is is nothing. It, it is absolutely nothing. It's an incredibly low power draw. The cranial, it's a flashlight. It's not something that requires huge amounts of power. Now, there are many CBMs that require much more power than this. In fact, I would venture that the flashlight is one of the lowest power draw things you could put in your body, and if not the lowest. So these numbers will often be much larger. Um, and then what we have here is a toggle on or off. If I hit the button, it will toggle on. You'll see it's color coded red to let me know it's on. And then if I toggle again, it will go off. Now be aware that does drain your power. So if we do that again, you'll see each time we turn it on, it's requiring that initial three joule um, power draw. Um, and then if I didn't have my special item here, you'll see we can't really see. I spawned this house, that's why there's grass underneath. Don't mind, uh, don't mind that. But if we now toggle our flashlight, it functions as any other flashlight in the world. You'll see the radius is a little bit smaller, I think, than the regular flashlight. Uh, although that may just be because I was moving a lot of furniture around. No, you'll see the radius on this flashlight is considerably smaller than the handheld flashlight. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything you can do to expand that or not. 
Um, but it is something that will, you know, it, it, it's, it's a flashlight. I really like the flashlight, cranial flashlight CBM. It allows you to do uh, vehicle work and things in the dark and just use your internal power reservoir rather than swapping out batteries in a handheld flashlight, things like that. That said, it's very easy to find a flashlight. It's not this incredible CBM that you can't live without, but it's a nice thing to have. Go ahead and shut that off. Um, let's talk about this menu in a little bit more detail. Number one, you can hit the exclamation key, which uh, on the QWERTY keyboard is shift one, uh, and it will pop up a description of this item. So here you'll see it's a cranial flashlight. Once again, tells us the power draw, and it gives a brief, brief bit of flavor as to what that is. Uh, surgically mounted between your eyes is a small but powerful LED flashlight. So again, LED, not as powerful as something, you know, a handheld flashlight, mag light that has a big, you know, uh, a larger battery draw and things like that and provides more light. There's a little LED in your head here. So we'll go ahead and toggle that off. And if we go to any of these CBMs, it will give us a brief description of that CBM. So the exclamation key is very valuable for if you don't know what a CBM does. Um, and it will provide you lots of information about it. Next, we have the reassign key. This lets you reassign the keys that they're toggled to. So if I set, uh, say I want to toggle my torsion ratchet and every time I just want to hit it, T, no, nope. reassign, reassigning, select the bionic, oh, select, yes, T. Uh, and now what I can do is just hit PT and it turns on nice and easy every time I need that particular charge and then shut it off again. And I'll let you, uh, let you do that. Let's drain our battery charge really quick by using the flashlight because we're gonna illustrate this in a moment about how battery charge works. So we'll just let that drain down to virtually nothing. We'll shut that back off. Um, again, you toggle these by hitting enter or hitting their corresponding letter. Next we have tab to switch tabs that lets you toggle between active and passive. S toggles fuel savings. So basically what this does is let's say we are recharging using metabolic interchange. Metabolic interchange is a thing that lets you sap calories out of your stomach and utilize them for, or your calorie stores and utilize them for power. So if I turn on metabolic interchange and I eat something, some of the calories rather than going into my body and going into my calorie stores will instead go towards my bioelectric energy. So if I toggle this on, it'll start sapping calories from me. Once I get to maximum power, it will automatically shut off. I believe that is what fuel saving does. Um, and it will turn off uh, when you max out. That way you're not sapping power continually. It will automatically shut off once you're full. It's not gonna keep draining your calories. So that's what fuel saving does. Generally would recommend leaving that on for everything. Next we have auto start mode. You can set it so that this will toggle automatically. So if we go to auto start, uh, once we get below 25%, this will now turn on automatically and begin sapping our metabolic interchange. I would caution you to be careful with this. Certain CBMs, um, auto starting can have negative ramifications. The uh, torch, the torsion ratchet, for instance, uh, drains your stamina significantly. So if you're in a fight and your power drops below 25 and this turns on, you're in a really dangerous predicament because now your stamina is draining very rapidly. So I'd be very careful about using auto start. It's a cool feature and I like it, um, but I generally don't, don't use it. Next we have available full fuel. I don't actually know what this means. It says meta, met, metabolism muscle. I don't really know what that means. Um, it may just be if we spawn, let's spawn some, I don't know, vodka. And we'll put that in a container and we'll spawn one of those. Uh, does it now show? It does not show. I thought it would show available fuels. Um, we have the ethanol burner, so normally alcohol would be usable. Anyway, let's talk about bionic energy. So that's, that's the bionic menu, pretty self-explanatory as far as things go. Again, we have the bionic power in the upper right corner, so you can always have that at a glance. It does display by default with your other statistics, but I use a non-default sidebar, so I'm not sure where in your sidebar it will be. Uh, so that's the gist of that particular menu. Once you start getting CBMs, you start collecting CBMs and you wanna install them, there's really two things that you need to do first and foremost. Number one is you're going to need power storage. If you don't have power storage, sometimes CBMs will install a small reservoir of power into your body. So like we have this cranial flashlight, 
We're at 250 kilojoules, which is, I believe, how much is installed by a battery charge. Let me take a look. Yes, by 250. So this flashlight did not give us any extra battery charge. So in order to get battery charge, in general, you will be looking for one of two CBMs. Number one is the power storage CBM, and number two is the power storage CBM Mark II. The regular CBM gives 100, I believe, and this Mark II gives 250 kilojoules of bioelectric energy storage. Uh, there is a maximum cap you can have on bioelectric energy. In general, I don't get anywhere close to it. I know people complain about it sometimes and say, oh, I want more, I want more. You don't need more. It's very rare that you need more than the maximum uh, allowable cap, and it's really silly to me that people want that expanded. Power storage CBMs are most commonly gained for, like I think they can spawn basically anywhere that you can get a CBM, but most, the highest percentage chance, if I remember right, is from shocker zombies. Just standard old shocker zombies, they will almost always drop a power storage CBM um, when you kill them, or when you dissect them, excuse me. Uh, we're looking for a regular shocker zombie. So this guy right here in my particular tile set, when we deal with him, he will very likely drop a uh, power storage CBM. In fact, let's uh, just butcher him. Do I have a tool? Uh, and here, in fact, is a good time for us to use our cranial flashlight. It will give us the opportunity to where we normally would not be able to dissect because of the darkness. Oh, it ran out. Well, that's okay, uh, because once you start, it, it's, it's not going to die. Uh, we unfortunately did not get a regular power storage CBM, but the shockers do have a good chance of dropping them. They're like mostly where I go when I'm looking for power storage. Additionally, they can spawn really anywhere else that CBMs spawn, but the shocker zombies are really the only ones I can say are like a good chance of finding them. So you're going to need power storage capacity, which comes from those particular two CBMs. And then what you're going to need is a recharging system of some kind, because once you have that, it's not going to be instantly charged. It's going to be empty, and you're going to have to recharge it in some way. Now, to do this, there are currently six. I believe I got all of them here. Six means by which you can recharge them. If you're using mods, there's at least one more method of recharging, but we're not going to discuss that because it comes from a mod. So what we have, the battery system CBM, and we'll pull up their descriptions. Basically, this allows you to drain batteries. So if you have a recharging station like we do in our, our car, you can recharge, say, a medium battery, and then just basically using the eat menu or the consume menu, um, you can just suck the energy right out of that battery and you'll suddenly have 500 um, battery charge worth of, of power coming into your body from that battery. Uh, I don't know if it's a perfect ratio or if you lose some in trans in transit, but yeah, you can just basically drain batteries for um, energy. So this is really good if you're set up and you have a recharging station, a very easy, reliable way to get power. Next is the cable charger CBM. Basically, this puts a hip a mounted port on your body and you using a jumper cable can connect to I believe just a vehicle uh, and it will recharge your battery. I know a lot of people like this. I've actually never used this so I'm not a hundred percent if that's how it works but I believe all you do is attach the jumper cable to a vehicle, uh, attach the other bit to you and and you're you're good to go from just sucking energy right out of your vehicle. So very good these first two if you have a setup vehicle you can easily use that um, once you have solar panels and all that stuff, it's basically free energy. Next, we have the ethanol burner, another one I don't particularly use. Basically, you uh, burn alcohol as fuel in an extremely efficient reaction. So if we turn this on, if we, nope, if we turn this on, it does not have enough fuel to start. Hmm, how do I, I have vodka. Don't I have vodka? Where did, uh, did I not just spawn vodka? Spawn vodka and contain it and we'll spawn like five bottles of vodka. Inventory, six bottles of vodka cold. Okay, drink one. I, I don't know, do you drink it actually? Now that I'm thinking, I thought you turned it on and then you drink it. Toggle fuel saving mode. Now, how do I, uh... Okay, I don't know how the ethanol burner works. Maybe it is just ethanol, because there is a thing called ethanol in the game. 
I thought this was the bender from Futurama style thing. Ethanol burner. Can store up to 500 milliliters and accepts ethanol, methanol, and denatured alcohol. I see. So we do not get to use just regular alcohol. It has to be a specific thing. So if we spawn a bottle of ethanol, can we now turn it on? No. Activate. No. Eat. I really don't want to drink ethanol because I feel like it could kill us. Okay, here it specifically says it would go into the ethanol burner. So let's put that in our body. You'll see we it only has capacity for 500, so it just charged basically. And here it now says that we have 500 charges of ethanol. So that is what available fuel does. It refers to what you have access to. So if we now turn on the ethanol burner, we would begin regaining power. And you'll see we jumped up to seven kilojoules in just a short span uh, from just one single ethanol. So that's obviously a very efficient way to do things. Um, that's interesting. I didn't know you had that internal reservoir. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that's the ethanol burner. Next, we have a gasoline fuel cell. This functions the same as the ethanol burner. Um, this has an internal bladder that you store gasoline fuel in. Um, so if we had, uh, we can't really spawn gasoline very easily in a container. So we're not going to worry about that one right now. But it has an internal bladder that you insert gasoline in. And then it turns on and utilizes the gasoline for power. Again, gasoline, uh, like ethanol, has a lot of potential energy in it. So it's something that I assume is incredibly efficient. Um, and because gasoline is very plentiful, it's a reliable way to do things. I actually do not like this CBM. I don't like that this was added to the game. It kind of bothers me that a human being would put essentially poison into a bladder in their body. It just seems inherently very dangerous. Presumably the ethanol is the same way. If uh, that bladder were to rupture, we would be, I assume, die of ethanol poisoning because 500 milliliters of ethanol seems like that would be incredibly toxic for the human body. But I guess I don't know. Uh, but I don't use either of those. They just don't really ap appeal to me from kind of a role play standpoint. Uh, but they're obviously very fuel efficient because there's a lot of potential energy in alcohol and gasoline. Next, we have the metabolic interchange. We talked about this briefly. Basically, as long as you have food in your body, you can uh, regain energy passively through the metabolic interchange. Uh, we can toggle this on because, of course, we have food in our body, and you'll see we're gradually gaining kilojoules as we wait here passively. So that is a good one that I often use. And then finally, we have the joint torsion ratchet. This functions by moving. Every time we move, it will generate uh, about 130 joules worth of energy um, so it does take longer to charge up our battery stores but if you're just walking around base this is a very efficient way of leveling up your bioelectric energy and additionally if you're going to do something like auto moving uh, obviously that would be a lot of movement that would recharge your batteries now what i will say which i just learned today is that even when it's off the joint torsion ratchet actually does regenerate a small amount of energy it's something like six joules so it's a very very tiny amount that would require quite a lot of movement to recharge but when you're talking about something as simple as the cranial flashlight that often can be enough you know and as you move around the world you will slowly regenerate power charge uh the other thing to note about the joint torsion ratchet is that once it's on your stamina is negatively impacted by this so you'll see we're at about a bar less than we normally would be and you'll see it's gradually depleting and that's because this is like, it also appears to slow us down. So if I turn this off, oh no, it doesn't seem like that affected our speed. It's 110 and 179. If we turn this on, yeah, it's about the same. Yeah, it's the same. Uh, I didn't know if it negatively impacted speed or not, but you'll see it's gradually draining stamina. So this can be problematic if you, again, like I said, having this auto turn on, let's say, at a particular percentage if we're in combat and it's sucking our stamina this could be very dangerous so we ne not necessarily want that one to auto toggle on um, but those are the the basic rechargers again there is at least one more in mods um, and that particular one that i'm thinking of functions by just consuming items and giving you flat bioelectric energy um, it's very game-breaking. It, it was the most powerful one in the game. They removed it for a reason, um, so we'll not talk about that. I know a lot of people are upset about it, but also it was dumb and doesn't make a lot of sense. So 
the uh, internal furnace was what that was. So I don't I don't want to discuss that. Um, so that's basically the two main things that you're going to need when it comes to bio, like bionics in general. You're going to need a power reservoir of some sort, and you're going to need a means by which to install it. Now, I will say that the most common ones you're going to come across, probably the joint torsion ratchet. Um, I see it the most when I'm dissecting corpses, even when I get into CBM vaults and things like that. That is the most common. The other one I see the most is the cable charger system. Uh, it just seems like those two... I find over and over and over. I almost never find the gasoline fuel cell, cell CBM. Ethanol seems pretty rare. Battery charge is, an uncom is pretty common. Same with metabolic interchange. Um, I'd say gasoline fuel cell is probably the most rare. I've, I've only seen it once or twice. And again, I don't like it for role play reasons. Uh, you can toggle things on and off. Uh, I don't think there's really more to discuss. Obviously, we could talk at length about the various CBMs in the game and what are the most valuable. It's uh, mostly it's common sense. Most of the stuff that you use the most in item form is somewhere available in CBM form. So like a toolbox, which is very, very powerful to find a toolbox in the game. Well, there's a CBM that functions as a toolbox more or less, so you don't have to carry it in your inventory. Pretty straightforward, obviously very valuable because you use your toolbox pretty regularly. The flashlight. Pretty valuable, as simple as it is, because it's something that you will use frequently. Um, the night vision CBM, very good, uh, which we've already discussed. Very valuable, because it gives you that little extra edge in the darkness. There are a lot of CBMs. Most of them are utility. There's one or two that are used for combat. There's one or two that are like... Mo like 90% of them are just utility tools that will be available to you. So like instead of carrying a lighter around, you can have a CBM that starts fires. There are some very advanced militaristic kind of CBMs in the game that do some really crazy wonky stuff. Um, but those are very rare. Uh, they're very valuable. And uh, I don't want to tell you what they are because that's part of the fun of the game. So they are some of them are game-breakingly powerful. Um, you'll know them when you get them. You'll immediately recognize that this is ridiculously overpowered. I think a lot of them need nerfs, personally, but uh, they can be a lot of fun. So keep your eye peeled. Again, uh, dissecting corpses and looting labs and things and, and finding CBMs. Scientists will often carry them in their inventory, but the majority of the time you will find them from dissecting corpses and cleaning them yourself. So just keep an eye out. Um, and yeah, you'll you'll pick up stuff as you go. Mostly you'll find the low tier stuff, like we found the internal chronometer. We've already found two of those in our Let's Play. They're incredibly common. Um, and it kind of makes sense, right, from a role play perspective. Most of the stuff you'll find is like practical stuff because most people who would get CBMs would get the things that are very practical. You can see how, you know, a, a, a soldier zombie, as simple as a clock is, might want an internal chronometer so that they can sync for missions. Uh, they can have exact precise times that, you know, to give reports and things at all times in the battlefield or wherever. You can see how something that simple, it would make sense to plug that into basically everyone. So, you know, it, it is mostly common sense. And in the highly experimental stuff, you really will only find on military style zombies. Um, and they are very rare because they are really only intended for very niche situations or they're extremely potent and uh, just for rarity reasons can't be very common. But anyway, that's a basic rundown of bionics. I don't know that there's much more to cover. I'm sure I probably missed something. I might have missed um, some additional rechargers, but I'm pretty sure this is, uh, this is it. So yeah, I generally lean on the joint torsion ratchet and metabolic interchange. I rarely use the other ones, even though they have a lot of value to them. It's just that these two are probably the most com well they're pretty common uh and then the cable charger i just never have jumper cables so i've never really used it so yeah um so that's that's gonna do it for this episode hopefully you learned something hopefully that all made sense thank you for watching hopefully you enjoyed the episode i'll be back with more tutorial content in the near future and i'll see you next time